people that are kind of private in the background that don't really do anything in terms of maybe asking a question or they just watch. So yeah. all the mods got it together. We were talking about this. We had this little group chat and we were talking about this where we were like, dude, we got to do something about this. It's got to improve for the members because it just is very, very redundant. So we decided that the best direction is going to be now every <coughs> second and fourth Saturday of the month. So it's going so to go two times a month, month, guys, two times a month. Now, not, for, not every single week, but two times. And it will be video based. So yep. we are going to do a live video based uh, mentoring session. Now, here is the really, really, really cool part, okay? It's not just us talking, all right? Fernando, or El Duterino, basically the coder mastermind of MIC, <laughs> designed a page that I will release the link to in main chat after this webinar is over, because again, this is a public webinar. I will release that link in chat after all this is done. Yep. The link is going to be able for every single member in MIC to submit their charts or to submit their questions. Now, all of the moderators are going to monitor that chart submission page. We have a back-end tool now that when you submit your chart, we see the chart submissions immediately after you enter it, yep. okay? Now, we are going to review those and we are going to pick from those uh, topics and then the topics that we see from those submissions you know it could be like there's needs to be more there, there, like zombie rule okay we need a little bit more clarification on zombie rule Dude, we're, we're gonna go into such depth for you guys it's yeah. like i know it's and joe let me say this because I know you guys like we did every single week in the past, man. But dude, I'm telling you, man, they were so redundant because the, the MIC process, guys, when you understand it, it's the same answers every time. There's no secret sauce, man. It's line and line. It's risk management. And we tell you how to follow trend and we tell you where to hit the charts. If you follow MIC process on the long and short side, guys, the answers are the same every week. This is our way to fucking totally like go into the matrix for you live, dude, and really tear apart the psychology and process behind it, man. There's going to be three different moderators there every single At time least. we have a session. Yep. They will rotate, okay? The moderators will rotate. It will not be the same three every single time. There will be participation from every single moderator, and we now have, I believe, 24 or 25 moderators. Yep. <clears throat> there will be a rotation basis on the moderators that come to it. And of course, any other moderators that want to come in on that Saturday and just be there, they can be there. Absolutely. But there will be ones that get rotated around and each person will come into it and be responsible for answering questions and helping choose topics for the week. Now, here's the best part about this, okay? The best part, the next two best parts about this is you get to vote as a member. You get to vote on the topics. So the moderators will pick a list of the topics from the chart submissions and questions that we get submitted. Then we will put that into MIC, into Slack, and members get to vote on it from Wednesday <coughs> to Friday at midnight from Wednesday to Friday at midnight, and then whatever topics are the highest, oh God. <laughs> 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 whatever topics are the highest voted topics based on Dominion's results, I'm just kidding, uh, based on MIC members votes, those will be the topics that get discussed. Now, let's go one step further. One step further, this is not just going to be moderators talking, okay? There will be a distinguishment between monthly, annual, and lifetime member submissions. If you are an annual or lifetime member and you submit your chart, your chart is chosen as one of those charts that we discuss and your topic is one of those that we discuss, you will have an opportunity to come on the mic with us and ask additional questions and get that one-on-one -on -one mentoring time with every single person that's in there in that Zoom webinar chat 
at that very instant. So and if you're in your lifetime and you want that extra help, from everyone, Saturday is going to be the time to be able to do that. Joe, let me interject here and say, guys, I, I was You're not kidding you. I've been you. Bro, I've been teasing for the last like four weeks on how much we're going to do for you guys in 2021. And again, man, I'm not bullshitting when I say, dude, annual and lifetime memberships are so much more exclusive. Dude, I'm telling you, if you guys want the true like the true mentorship at MAC, there's a lot in the monthly, but do the annual and lifetime if you have the resource. I'm telling you, man, we go above and beyond for every tier or every package. But bro, again, if you're an annual or lifetime member and you've committed more to us, we are going to go that extra step, man. You do have extra perks. And so now we're introducing those. But uh, yeah. dude, this can be epic for everybody, man. This is literally going to change the game. It's going to be an hour long as they usually are. Now, the first 30 minutes of the webinar <coughs> and the mentoring session is going to just be the Q&A about the topic of discussion, yep. okay? The topic or topics, just depending on the votes. Next 30 minutes after that will be the charts that we choose from those submissions to be able to review, okay? Those partic that particular format, that last 30 minutes, is when you're going to be able to come on and, and jump on there. Because the big point for doing this, guys, the big point for doing this is there's nearly 2,000 people in here now, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I'm, I'm going to argue that maybe 90 to 100 of that 2,000 are consistent and the rest are inconsistent, searching for consistency. Yeah, they're on their way. And – most of those people that are inconsistent <clears throat> and hell, even the ones that are consistent, you hinder yourself by going down these rabbit holes. You, you hinder yourself by going down these rabbit holes and asking questions about things that don't matter to your success. It's pointless knowledge. It's pointless knowledge. And so the purpose of the mentoring sessions is to condense all of that be concise in the coaching, be concise in the mentoring, be concise in every single walk of life in our trading and everywhere else direct and to the point. And we don't answer 46 questions that are all about the same topic. Yeah, dude. And, and, and you guys are going to, again, man, we get so many PMs that are the same every single week. Like, you know, our DMs are loaded. I mean, dude, I do freaking 50 PMs a day, right? Especially in the morning, like the immediate morning. And and guys, a lot of them are the same questions. Now all these are going to be answered in almost a webinar form in depth, dude. And we're here to abolish all those, those things that you have to unlearn of like, hey, Tosh, dude, you know, oh my God, I'm almost on the way to profitability, man. But I got to figure out dark pools. That's going to save me. I got to figure out level two, bro. We're going to give you the real deal, man. <laughs> like, right. Absolutely. Yep. It ain't dark pools, bro. That's, that's keeping you from consistency. <laughs> yeah. The market makers are not keeping you from consistency. You Never are seeing your hard stops is not the problem, bro. Yeah. Like hard stops are not the issue. Market makers are not the issues. Yeah. Oh, Somebody man. says the, the stream is too blurry. Are you streaming in 1080p? I you should be. be. You just did the same as every week. Who said it was blurry? Oh, no. It streams in 720. Uh, I have no idea. By asking. I, that's what Zoom streams in for some reason. I don't know why it streams that way, but it stream, It always streams in 720p. I don't know why it doesn't stream in 4K, but <clears throat> I mean, I'm looking at the YouTube and it looks pretty clear to me on my end, but some, some guys are saying it's fine on, I mean, I just did exactly what we do every week. You guys can see. Yeah. Through? Cool. Yeah. Every yeah. now and then somebody's going to have, you know, bad connection or something connection on your end and you just need to check the check that. But I mean, it's 720p. It's not, it's not super clear, but you know, this happens mostly from Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's 720p. You notice how, isn't that funny how, when we're like, yeah, it's only 720p. It's not 4k. Like we're so spoiled. I'll never forget. I was in high school as a freshman and like, 
I've always like made money in funny ways, man. Like I did like acting as a kid and this and that and stuff. And I always had like money. Right. And like, I, I would just buy things. Right. So I remember going to Best Buy dude when I was like a freshman. I was like 13 years old, dude. I was like, dad, I want this badass new 720 LCD monitor, like TV, dude. It was like 27 to 32 inches. And I thought it was everything in the world, bro. If I were to see that today, dude, you couldn't give that away at a garage sale versus what they have at Best Buy. <laughs> Bro, for real. We're I know. so spoiled, man. Fuck, dude. I remember the oh, and that's why I brought it up, dude. I dropped like two thousand dollars on it, dude. Like that's why really? I brought that whole thing up. I dropped like two thousand dollars, dude, on a seven twenty, like whatever they were called. They were called like LCDs back. I can't even remember what they were called, but it was like thirty two inches, bro. It you could get an eighty five inch like Samsung these days for that four <laughs> K. Yeah, that's freaking hilarious. It's unreal, man. It's it, like people are like, dude, everybody's com all the people that complain there's no opportunities out there. I'm like, dude, if you if you have an iPhone, bro, you can figure out how to make money. You're connected to the entire world through an iPhone, bro. Not even just trading. Like you're literally connected to the entire go figure out how to make money. Yep. Crazy, man. But yeah, so guys, any questions on uh, just time, kind of uh, bring them on. <clears throat> Give me two minutes here. Y'all flood us with your questions. I got to make a bottle. <laughs> you know what? I got to make a bottle and give it to the baby. Hang on. Oh, I was like, I was like, Joe, dude, put down the booze, man. <laughs> like, dude, you freaking James and your fireball, bro. We're giving a one. <laughs> Joe's like, hold up. I got to get a bottle. Easier to breastfeed. Uh, what'd you guys trade today, man? Do you have any questions about kind of like, dude, today sucked ass, man. Today for, if you were a short seller today, bro, this is pretty much the handpicked tickers that you had today. And this is what I call just an anchor day where like, if all of these were sailboats or everything, bro, they all threw the anchor and sunk, like nothing popped, nothing caught a tailwind and gave us an entry. Almost none of us traded today, dude. This was such a lame day, bro. These were all my levels from the morning that I was, that I wanted them to pop up to and scale. Um, I don't really trade after the first hour, which this was zombie and then into my line, which I wanted over here. So arguably this maybe chase a death candle, but like, dude, the slim pickings today, bro. And that's the thing about trading is you guys are going to understand, man, that not every day, dude, is going to be a home run. If there's some days where you make four grand, there's some days where you make $4, dude. It's just how it is, bro. That's how trading is. And some days you're going to be down, you know what I mean? But like the days that you don't have a trade, it's better not to force and preserve that mental capital than risk hurting that mental capital. And then tomorrow when everything goes to your lines and everything goes perfect and you get the exact pops you want, you're not mentally drained already and you're not screwed because today you chase lows and got squeezed during zombie hour, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the whole thing about trading is not only knowing what to attack is knowing when to attack because dude, today was just not a day where you push on the short side. At least with at least with small caps. I mean, you know, Joe could say there was probably a ton of opportunity in big caps, which I wasn't paying too much attention today to. But when it came to small caps today, man, it was slim pickings. It really was. It was kind of one of those days. <clears throat> oh, I almost forgot I had some tea by my side. Hold on, let me get some tea. Zombie is an account saver. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. Dude, I only trade the first hour of the day, man. After the first hour of the day, I will every now and then, probably only two or three times a week, three at the most, we'll come back for a reversal hour if there's something good. Uh, when it comes to bullets, jackpot, it depends. So this is actually a good question. Uh, let me find you an example. Let's see. I mean, there, God, there weren't great examples today, but let me show you. So if something was trading on VWAP or near it, and I'm using something like outer lines, right? On say, um, you know, say a 30% move above VWAP, this is where I'm using less. So let me, let me kind of show you how this works. So this is what I do. I will hit on outer lines, right? I will use three bullets within here. So like, you know, obviously you do it 33%, 33%, 33%. If you went exact share count, Sometimes within that 30% rule, I actually go up in size. So I'll just, I'll just do a small number so you guys can follow me. But say your max size was 1,500 shares. I'm talking 500, 500, and 500. Do you see what I'm saying? So say, say your max size of, of, and again, if it's overview of the 30%. So remind you, I don't want to confuse people out here who don't know what the 30% rule, max size within the, within the, 
predefined 30% levels, you know, maybe your, maybe your full size is fucking 10 grand. I don't know, but that 30%, whatever you want to equate it to, everybody's different. Uh, I use three bullets on above the one. Um, and I, sorry, that, that's the one where I use the most. I actually only use one or two under VWAP, but I hit harder. Does that make sense? I go 50 and then 100. So when it comes to some, oh God, there's just no example say, but say Wimmy was opening up down here and, and VWAP was the outer line, right? So say like, I'll just kind of draw, you know what? Hold on. Let me blow this up to a bigger chart so I can really show you. One second. Um, Wimmy is the best example I guess I could theoretically show. Let me show you this. Let me just remove everything. So you guys get that? I use three to four bullets on the way up. But if I get my, if I get my setup that I love, my number one setup, right? Say this was the open and this is the, this is VWAP. Say it's trading way under VWAP, bro. Like this is the open and you know, this is still the pre-market high price. Bro, I'm literally hitting almost 50% of my size right here and up to 100 on of my size at VWAP. If, 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 I can't explain this enough. If there's a lot of meat to come down, my size in those two bullets, usually two, maybe three at the most, usually two bullets, which will be 50% and 100%, will be only if there's a ton of room to come down. This would have had nice room to come down. Um, theoretically, if this was where the open is and it hit these levels, I think we could have gotten a nice move out of that. If there's not a lot of meat to come down, I might only use, dude, like 30%, you know, 60%. So again, man, every trade is different. Every chart is different. That's more of a general way to describe it. I hope that's clear. But again, meat is everything, bro. So if I'm over VWAP and in a 30% level, I'm using three to four. I'm hitting nibblers, dude. I'm hitting nibblers because... <laughs> nibblers. Have we ever used that term? Copyright that right now. I'm using nibblers above VWAP into those outer lines, like on something like Acor, because bro, if I if I'm in 30% size on like say three ads, so get in, get in again, get in again, and I get a fucking death candle slam, bro. I'm gonna cover half of that. Now that we're under VWAP, I'm throwing on the house if there's meat to come down. But if we're starting way under VWAP and it's going towards VWAP, bro. It, there's two things that you have to consider. If it's a decently sized float, if it's super broken under VWAP, and if there's a ton of overhead, and lastly, the best part, if there's a ton more meat to come down, I'm hitting hard under VWAP. It's already under VWAP. It's already broken. If something is taking the attention away from it, oh, fuck, I forgot this is a free webinar. <laughs> oh, shit. Dude, I always forget. They're like, you got to sign up for MIC to get this shit, dude. <laughs> okay, I'm going to zip my lips, but you guys got a pretty... Uh, you got a you got a decent understanding right there. Fuck man, I always forget. Yeah, you, know, like, you got a pretty very clear strategy, brother. Right well, I'm like, here's here's my entire strategy, bro. There's everything. I always forget, man. Dude, you just rem you just reminded me of Michael Scott when he's like negotiating with Daryl about his paycheck, and he's like, take control of the conversation by mumbling at the end of your sentence. <laughs> bro, it's like it's like Tom F Petten or whatever that the Spider Man actor, whatever his name is. Um, and he's like, he's always telling everybody in like interviews before the movie release, like, yeah, dude, the main characters die. This, that. It's like, oh, fuck. Don't even need to go see the movie now, man. Now, if you got, here's the thing. Here's the thing about these webinars, man. We're here to provide content, dude. I'm nice, dude, man. I want everybody to fucking prosper. But again, dude, you're not just going to understand how to trade just from these webinars alone. There is so much within this that once you sign up, you are literally going to get, if you learned one thing from this webinar, imagine if you had our thousand plus video library list. Imagine if you had our accelerator course. Imagine if you had our course that takes you from long trades to short trades, to swing trades, to every kind of trade, our options series. Like there's so much value at MIC, dude, no matter how much value you get in, you know, these Wednesday webinars, which maybe you do, maybe you don't, it's up to you. It's up to you what you relate with. Think about becoming a member and how much you'd get there. Does that make sense? But again, as always, I give away too much. <laughs> I know you guys, I know there's a certain number of you fucking guys that show up every single Wednesday, like, ooh, Tosh is gonna give out some golden webinars, man. <laughs> I don't have to join MIC. Yeah, there's, there's a lot on the YouTube that are like, ooh, freebies. Freebies, let me get those golden nugs, dude. You see, Mr. Powers, I love gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh see you Kyle 
the accelerator course is going to be your best bet, man. If you're brand new and you need a full thorough description on how to trade, bro, there's no better. Joe created this, took him six months. This is everything in a nutshell, dude. I'm telling you, this is what you need if you're brand new. And this is where you should start. So if you're a brand new member to MIC and you have one thing to do, it's watch this two times before you ask any question to anybody. It's watch this two times. Then you blow up RPMs if you want to, or the weekend mentoring. <laughs> <laughs> but I need you to watch that two times before you come to me and you're like, hey, Tosh, what the hell is VWAP? I'll be like, bro, you got to access the accelerator course. Need the video. I'd be like, I will bend over backwards to help you once you watch the accelerator course. Dude, look at this. Look at this Tessery thing, bro. Look at this. Hold up. Wait a minute. Since we were giving this webinar, man. What? What's it doing? Oh, man. It's at 8.54 already. Oh, nice. Is, my computer keeps freaking... Dude, these webinars are so extraneous on my computer, man. It's crazy. One sec. Oh, my God. I think I'm freezing. I might have to close uh, TD. Oh shit, it just it just blew out, man. Damn. Yeah, whatever. Joe, let's talk about psychology, man. We do yeah, we so many charts it, yeah. every single week, bro. We do so many charts. Let's talk about some psychology stuff. And if people have questions about charts, I've got charts open on my end and I can just paste a screenshot. Yeah, dude, Zoom just gave me the kibosh on the TOS, man. Does anybody have questions on psychology? Does anybody have, like, we don't, we tackle psychology a lot, but we're usually showing you guys how to draw the lines, which we already did through like the first half of this webinar. What do you guys want to talk about as it relates to being a trader? What it means to be a trader? What it means to be consistent? What it means to do hard stops? Like, like FOMO, revenge trade, chasing, like, are these the kind of things that you're struggling with? We can dive into that. Or we can talk about the state of the markets in which Joe and I love to rant on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Y'all enjoy that one. Joe, what do you think about this market, dude? Remember what I said last week where I said, I don't think a bear market's coming and I think they're going to do whatever they can. It's just like now we're here in just a 12-year a span and we'll go into 13 and 14 before we get a, ever get a correction. And then the correction that we get, bro, is probably going to be where the highs are now. And that's the quote-unquote crash that people have been waiting for. Yeah, Um I don't think that it's going to, my fear is with this impeachment stuff is, is that Trump is going to like yank the market around with him. You think so? And so like, I just started, I trimmed down pretty much everything I have. And I think there's going to be a correction, but I don't think we're falling into a bear market by any means. I, it's just going to prop up and prop up and prop up and prop up. But I mean, on a weekly time frame, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I would love the spy to go to 400 and then just, you know, set a top. It, it feels to me, it feels to me like spy 400 is coming very soon. And Tesla 1000 is coming pretty soon to be honest. And they, and they might be really, really big psychological price targets. Cause here's the thing, man, on a chart, I don't even have to show you. We can just talk about it. On a chart, when you have something that everybody is like, oh my God, is it going to reach? Is it going to reach? A lot of the times it does, man. But once it does, that's the point where everybody goes, well, now what? Oh, okay, maybe we'll sell. You know, this is this is a huge point of resistance. And that would be SPY 400. And that would be, dude, that would be Tesla 1000. You know what I mean? Yep. Dude, I'm like, I'm like, is Amazon or Tesla ever going to do another stock split? Like, this is insane, bro. I don't think Amazon's ever done one, but when are they going to? Amazon did one a long time ago. Did they? Um, Netflix did one a long time ago. Apple did one. I remember Netflix and Apple. I don't remember Apple's if it was an Amazon one. Um, and then, uh, who was the other one that I was thinking about the other day? I don't remember what it was, but it was... Uh, um, Basically, we were talking. We were talking about uh, how these the stock splits that that are, that occur or that need to occur to make everything affordable. All it does is attract new buyers, which drives it right back to where it was. Bro, so when they when they did the, so listen to this man, when they did the stock split, 
for uh, for Tesla on this most recent turn, right? If I remember correctly, we had like 800 before, 900, whatever it was. And then they did a stock split. And bro, what was it trading at? 350 or 400, if I remember correctly? What was? A, a Tesla. Before it went back up to nearly 1,000 like it's doing now. Like it, it was oh, at like yeah. 350. Oh, yeah. In the height of all of the uh, the pandemic, it went it dropped to like three twenty or something. Oh, like three twenty. Okay, yeah, because I remember, dude. I was yeah, scooping. It was, like, it was pretty low. Uh, let me look at it here. It dropped to well, it's the charts all fucked up now, but no, no, I, I remember that because I was just scooping every day, just like just one yeah. of my you know thirty companies that I do. But I was like, I had like fifty shares of Tesla, at like three fifty or something. I was just day trading. I I remember something like along those lines. I was just yeah. in and out, in and out, like every single day, man. And then it just blew up all the way. I mean, it just went to freaking eight, 900 again that, you know, now it's just like, oh my God, I wish I had those 50, 60 shares. I know. Right? I had. I know. Dude. Yeah. It's at, uh, I like the, the, the idea of Tesla, I, even with the, even with the stock split, I, I think it's definitely, got a thousand written all over it i think it's got i think it's got way more written over that but i totally agree with Probably, you Probably, yeah i think a thousand is like the easiest choice possible i'll tell you I'll, uh, we can talk about this i'll give you guys a fresh new little topic here to discuss my next biggest probably investment is going to be in marijuana companies dude, so I've, joe i've heard you cough in this whole webinar dude you got to put the bong down all right man <laughs> I know, bro. It's no, it's that fucking. I'm still like that, that COVID shit. Just, oh, you're the backside of COVID right now. Yeah, it it is. the The cough has stuck with me. Did it? Um, and it's it's just annoying, bro. It's like annoying. Low hanging fruit, man. It's still kind of there. Yeah. It's still oh, kind of dude, I, I drink tons of water, and and it still won't go away. It's just, ugh, it sucks. Anyway, so my thing is gonna be marijuana place and the reason being is because democrats have pushed for marijuana legalization for a long time and so i think this is going to be the juice that that marijuana companies need in order to um to kind of create this um volley in this new this new market for marijuana companies because you know if we can legalize like interstate or or international i guess it's really international international trade all of these canadian companies are gonna blow up the fact that these canadian companies can come into the u.s and sell their products um if we can get marijuana legalized to the point where it's just a it's just a commodity at that point and it's not a drug um then i think it's going to be pretty big for for that market so i'm watching stuff like cgc tlry y tlry uh yep. uh acb is also another one but i really like cgc for the most part uh and that's pretty much where i'm sticking well it's kind of like it's kind of like trends right so like i know we kind of hovered around this topic before but you guys got to really pay attention to this man if you don't and one of the only reasons why i say actually pay attention to politics is especially if you're in a career that revolves around money because politics is all basically money biased on either side of who wants to tax more who wants to do this etc what is the republican agenda what is the democratic agenda and you know republicans are notoriously known and this is the only thing i actually disagree with republicans right because i'm as red as you can get except they're never for the environment they just don't believe in climate change i totally do but democrats are very for the alternatives the alternative fuels therefore you know helping a ton of people therefore organizations that republicans just don't want to throw money at uh therefore things like yeah you know the marijuana sector that's the thing so if republicans get in power or democrats get in power this is the thing that happens man so there's trends in everything and it's gonna really really relate to uh it's gonna really relate to the markets man you guys gotta pay attention i know a lot of people who are following on uh instagram were saying for months dude before the election they go you know if biden gets elected dude these are the stocks that you need to focus on it everything bro was marijuana or alternative yep. fuel tesla yep. setage bep fucking solo candy anything that is literally alternative fuel or uh, progressive correct 
And yep. then a big business or tech when it comes to like the Republican side. So obviously now that Senate, you know, is pretty much 50, 50 where Nancy, or um, I'm sorry, Nancy Pelosi, where uh, Kamala Harris would basically be the deciding vote. Uh, they're going to push a lot of things through, man, on the Democratic agenda. So you guys need to pay attention. There is opportunity there, but it's also like, it's not just knowing which opportunity, like, oh, let me just now invest in Tilray or Tesla or things like that. It's guys, if something's on a fucking bull run, you guys got to know what to stay away from betting against. If, if, if something like alternative fuel or like we said, marijuana is going insane, yeah, dude, maybe it's not the time to bet against that. I'm not saying ride the, tr the, the tsunami with it up. I'm just saying, don't be fucking stupid, dude, and add and add and add blindly against it, and you get squeezed to death. Like, that's yeah. also what I'm saying. Yep. Like, pay attention to who's in power, man. Pay attention to the current trends. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. And there's a, like, dude, okay, so the reason why I say this is the worst trading streak I ever had in my seven-year career was for two months, dude, I feel like I couldn't pick a right trade during the crypto craze when crypto was brand new, dude. I mean, I didn't even know what a Bitcoin was back then. I think it was three or four years ago. Dude, I had two months. You, what, what was it, Joe? 2017? Yeah, 2017. Dude, 2017, I think I ended the year, bro, literally like like barely green, man. I went hard on betting against crypto and I fucked up, dude. It was the, it was the worst year of my trading career is because I thought I knew better and I didn't pay attention to current trends. I didn't pay attention to, you know what, dude, just because I'm not writing the trend up of Bitcoin doesn't mean it's not here to rip shorts faces off. So any company, yep. if you remember that was, you know, anything, dude, it, like, obviously I don't have charts up, but anything that you saw today, right. That was like, just a normal day one that's going through, it's got overhead, it's got pre-mark, et cetera, et cetera. Bro, so many of those squeezed to the heavens and, and went from two to fucking 40 or Mara. And oh my God, I'll never forget Mara. That was like one of my biggest losses, dude. It was so, because I just thought I could add, add, and add. What, what were these? What's Bitcoin? It's nothing. Well, dude, it was something that was talked about by everybody on earth. And if everybody's focused on marijuana and alternative fuel right now, be fucking careful, dude. Yep. That's what I'm trying to say. Yep. Man, I, I hated 2017, dude. It was it, like, it wasn't even like I lost a bunch of money. It was the mental fuckery that I just did exactly the opposite. And I just vowed ever since then, I was like, you know what, dude? Like, look, man, obviously you're really good with risk, et cetera, et cetera. But dude, stop fighting trend, man. You, you, can't, you can't have a, look, it's not that you can't have a profitable career fighting trend, but you're not going to have a stress-free one. And nowadays, all I do is ride a trend and I have a stress-free trading career. You know what I mean? It's like, it, make the most amount of money with the least amount of stress, dude. You can try to be that contrarian all day, every day and fight the crazes. And dude, I hate this fucking thing. You know where <laughs> I started showing this, Joe? It was this run, bro. I think I, I was in this... I, Bro, I swear to God, man, I think I held from five to 13, dude. Like Oof. that, that now I didn't have crazy size, but when you add, 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 and add $10 against you, bro, you're going to take a hefty oh, loss, man. And I just remember sitting there that day with like, like, I was just like, wow, I underestimated this craze. And what did I do? Like, I just remember 2017, dude, Mara really, it took like two months of gains in one trade or something like that. And I was just like, oh my God, man, you can't fight trend on on current movers, dude. And if everyone's talking about it, man, just be careful, man. Just because you miss out on the upside does not mean you bet against it. My favorite of all of those was XNet. Oh, you know what? I actually made money on XNet because I actually hit on the backside of this one. I remember this one. Yeah. You know why, Joe? You know why? It was this late XNet 2017. Had so yeah, XNet had so many good setups. But dude, notice how this, Joe, notice this. When all the crypto started coming, this was later in 2017. This was one of the like one of the last ones that I remember. I cleaned up on the backside of this, and I think I made my Mara gains back on this one. But dude, let me tell you, those early runners where I just didn't know what Bitcoin was and underestimated the move, dude, it wrecked me for a couple months. Like you got to be careful. But Xnet was fun, man. <laughs> Xnet was fun. Actually, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm getting my timelines mixed up. Mara. Mara wrecked me. Was it Mara? Dude, I'm, I'm trying to remember that stock. Cause there was, what were the name? What were the biggest, what were the biggest names, Joe? I'm trying to remember. Oh no, no, no. I do have my timeline, right? I have my timeline, right? 
this was in, this was 18, but I was hitting it dude into 18. I was hitting like this bad. I wasn't hitting it up here. I was doing like the low hanging fruit on X net when I found it was over. That's right. Okay. I, I got the timeline, right? Yeah. I was trying to figure that out. I was like, wait, I know I got wrecked on Mara, but I made it back on X net. That's why dude. Cause look at, look at how long the backside was, dude. It's insane. It was a year, dude. It was a year. That's crazy. What happened? My stuff just, I don't know if that was my internet. It might've been my internet, but I just missed all of that. Oh, did you cut out? Yeah. My, my stuff cut out. This was the reason. move. This was the move. I, I was like, I was looking yeah. at the dates. I was like 18, 19. No, no, this was the move. This was the move. I got wrecked on Mara or riot. Yeah. It was one of those. I think, so, dude, I can't remember. It was Riot or Mara. It was one of those. I remember that. But I did clean up on X and I was saying I made it back on the backside. And look at this. I had like a year just back in trail. I just remember catching like a month short on this, dude. I swear to God, it was crazy. Because I was like, okay, maybe the momentum has finally shifted. But it was around that like late 17, yep. maybe early 18, in 18. It was, it was one of those time frames. All I'm saying is start learning how to ride trend, man. Don't fight it. Just don't fight it. Joe, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I hear you. You know, brother, you got kids screaming in the background, man. Go do your thing. <laughs> Joe is a dad first, a trader second. That's how it should be. Guys, do you have any questions for us? Do you have any questions, specifically psychology questions, which we should talk about? Who's got some questions? Who's got questions? Joe will see the live, the YouTube live questions. I'll focus on the ones inside the chat. And uh, yeah, man, is there anything you guys want to talk about today? Like, are you having trouble with things? Man, dude, seeing these old charts, bro, I've been trading for so long, man. Good God. I think I started my trading career in like 14 or 15. Jesus, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm a Tom's, bro. Funny, fun fact, man. I got like, I've got like a head full of these like fun, weird facts, but normal, like, you know, commercial toothpaste like Colgate and Crest, bro, it kills all the bacteria in your mouth. That shit is absolute poison to you. If you want like, the, one of the only things I go supernatural, bro, is is Larry toothpaste. I'm not kidding because it keeps the, uh, the good bacteria that you need in your body, man. This absolutely wrecks your teeth, dude. Uh, what do you do when on a losing streak? So what I did back then, Island, is here's what I did. So when I had trouble in the crypto craze back in 2017 to 2018, I think it was early 2018, um, here's what you do, man. You, you, you humble yourself. You go, I need a week. I need a week. Uh, oh, I love these, dude. We'll get to all these. I need a week. I took a week off and it was the best thing I'd ever done because I was coming off like, like, dude, literally, I'm not kidding. In one trade, giving back like two months of gains, dude. And, and I was up on the year pretty nicely. And I just remember, bro, I was like head in hands. I was like, I never do this. Like, what the fuck? I used to do that when I first started out. How am I, like, how did I just give back so much? Well, obviously we weren't using hard stops back then, but here's what you do, man. You take some time away from screens. And then when you come back, you go, what is not working? Let me do all of the opposite of that. And let me go back to just trying to get green. I don't care if it's $1, dude, getting, it's all about resetting your mental. So when you're on a losing streak, bro, it's all about getting on the right track to get your mental back on track. It's not about the money at that point. Dude, the money comes in time. Look, trading's an art form. When you trade correctly, the money comes. Like trade right and the money takes care of itself. But when you're not trading correctly and you're not trading process or you're adding, 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 like I did and not using hard stops when you should, bro, this is the shit that ruins your mental for months to come and years to come if you don't get a handle on it quickly. So, you know, uh, after the crypto craze, man, I just went, again, it was a sector play. It was, yeah, man, of course. Um, you know, when the crypto craze happened the first time, this, this was the first time you guys, this was like my introduction in crypto, right? In like 2017, I was like, oh my God, now they're entering small caps. Like what's going, every single small cap in the industry is saying, they're putting out a PR saying now they're doing crypto. And this was companies that didn't even know what crypto was, dude. It was just a way for them to make money. But short sellers who were stubborn, I know a lot of my friends, dude, we got wrecked, bro. We got wrecked because we didn't equate how ridiculous it would, it would be, man. And again, in small caps, it doesn't need to make sense. Line to line, man, play your price action, play your process. There's a lot of moves that don't make sense. You got to play your plan and process. And this is why we preach hard stops nowadays, bro. 
is because they save us. And you're never going to take that career ending loss if you have those hard stops in place. So when you're on that losing streak, you need to do everything you can to say, look, man, I fucked up. You know, it's like, it, it, yeah, it's like on the bandwagon. You do it's, it. You Kodak, man. I remember that. I, I had a friend that blew up on Kodak, man. We were trading together um, in a room back in the day. And I had, I think there were 20 traders in there. Dude, Kodak ended a really, really good short seller, man, on that move. And I, I still remember some horror stories of the crypto craze, dude. It ended a lot of, it ended a lot of people, man. And some dear friends, bro. I had a friend that had to sell his rental properties because he blew up one day, bro. I was on the phone with him. He was practically crying, dude. And I was like, oh, man. So again, guys, don't treat trading like a lottery ticket and don't treat it like it's something that can't hurt you if you're stupid. Dude, it's very dangerous if you're a dumbass. If you follow the MIC process, go line to line and set your hard stuff, bro, it's very simple. It's not easy. There's nothing easy about this career. You've picked a career where you literally risk money for a living and you know always have a mirror up to your emotions and you're always looking within. We're students for life. You're always learning. But the second you go, oh, I've mastered this, like maybe I did before the crypto craze, crypto humbled my ass. And then you get smacked in the face. Then on that losing streak, once it's over, you go, okay, it's time to recollect. It's time to take a step back. It's time to say, okay, you know what? That didn't work. What do I do to go back to full process that works again? Get back to your process. That's it. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Mental discipline, trying to stop trading when things aren't going well, that isn't so easy. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the same thing, Stephen. It's every now and then, bro, you just got to take a day off. I took a week off, bro. I took a week off. I literally flew somewhere. I said, I'm fucking done with charts for two, uh, for a week to two weeks, whatever it was. I, again, this was four years ago, man, three years ago. I can't remember, but I know it was like a week. If you guys are having trouble right now, if you're finding trouble with consistency, if you're having any kind of trouble on anything that's plaguing your mind daily, take a day, man. Take two. Take a week if you need it, bro. The market will always be here. Opportunity will always be here. If you go, oh, man, I can't take a day off because um, I'm going to miss out and miss out and miss out. Dude, you're just thinking about money. And yes, when you have a pro <laughs> Joe, uh, or, uh, not Joe, but Bao and Alex, you know, have a running joke that, you know, when, when Bao was in his prime during OTCs, right, he couldn't take a day off, man, because when you make 50000 to 70000 a day every single day for five years like Bao used to do during the OTC days, bro, when you have a guaranteed $500,000 you know, a month for every single year for freaking seven years or whatever it was, if you take a day off, dude, that's insane opportunity cost. But again, man, again, life is not just about dollars, man. It is about getting your head right. And, you know, I always say, I mean, I kind of made this famous, but like, I always say it, dude, I don't care if you're profitable every single day. I don't care if you're a loser who loses every day. You need a day off, dude. It's, it's a, I don't care if you're like, you're the king of the hill or not the king of the hill. A time away from markets is necessary, man. Because again, whether you're winning, whether you're losing, dude, literally, whether, whether you don't miss, you're still on adrenaline risking money for a living, you are a professional gambler. You're always on a certain level of adrenaline. And you know, what we say is, you know, one of our taglines is, um, and I'm really glad we're talking about this stuff today, man, because I always talk about outer lines, but this is good. When you're a full-time trader or when you trade full-time, you know, when, when you make money trading, when you're here every day, waking up at the times we do, getting the locates, doing the thing, there's a certain level of adrenaline. So while we make the most amount of money with the least amount of stress, guys, it'd be, it'd be impossible to say that it's literally 100% stress-free. Every day you incorporate some kind of stress. Today, <laughs> today, the stress was not having a play. It wasn't even the stocks that you were in. It was like, wow, dude, I'm a short seller and I'm not going to make money in small caps today because there's no play for me. That's a little stressful. You are in a job where, you know, there, who knows if, tomorrow is going to be a seventy thousand dollar day tomorrow or you're stupid and you lose 10 because you didn't have a hard stop or you just respect normal day process and when you do lose maybe it's only 300 bucks you know every day you got to be on your game every day you're it's like a pin needle man you got to make sure you are fucking you know neo in the matrix and balancing that spoon right i, I don't know there's probably some better analogy but my point is man is you're in a career where if you are stupid one day you could be done you got to be on your game every single day. And if you're not feeling on your game or you've been off your game for a little bit, what I'm trying to say is take a day, man. Take a day, bro. I don't care if you win every single day. Take a day. Take a day. You're always on adrenaline. This is why on the weekends, man, after years and years of obsessing, now on the weekends, I'm like, dude, don't look at a chart, bro. 
I don't even want someone to like, I don't even want any of my friends to talk to me about trading on the weekend sometimes, because you know why? That's my time to just reset. And then I'm so much more level-headed and ready to absolutely demolish it on Monday because I didn't look at a chart on Saturday and Sunday. But again, this is someone who's been trading for seven years and has a process. So if you don't have that yet, yeah, you know, spend 14 hours every Saturday and Sunday like I did for five years, whatever you gotta do. But my whole point is step away every now and then. Don't bet the rent is what he would say. That is so fucking good. <laughs> um, where are we at? I, I, I'm ranting for a long time. Why, why am I scared of holding gains? Ah, that's a good one. So Ventum, check this out. Human psychology, when it boils down to trading, is actually a fight or flight feeling. And our brains have not really, you know, evolved or leveled up in thousands of years, dude. If you really, you know, talk to a scientist or a chemist and all the guys who know this shit, bro, we're cavemen in our minds when it comes to chemical reactions and serotonin releases and fight or flight or the things that provide chills on your body and adrenaline. Well, here's the thing that's so funny about trading. It's unbelievably organically opposite of how your body produces chemical reactions. So think about this. If you equate it to um, a, a, you know, a, cave, a Neanderthal brain, which we still technically have, we're just educated Neanderthals, think about it like this. When you are in the money, your mind tells you to take it immediately. You know why? Because that's survival. It's not money at this point, guys. Again, Neanderthal brain. Money equals survival. When you're losing, it means you're dying in your Neanderthal brain. So this is why we don't cut losers. We don't want to die. It's, it's kind of like the opposite thing. Like you should cut losers quickly and let your winners run. Obviously is the opposite of what these chemical reactions are do. So when you're down in a trade, bro, you're not cutting the loss when you're brand new and uneducated in trading because your chemical reaction Neanderthal brain is saying, oh my God, dude, if I take this loss, I accept that I just died. But when you're in the money, you go, your Neanderthal brain goes, dude, take that shit, son. That's survival, man. Now you get to, now you get to go eat for a day. Take this fucking money. And then you pike stocks. This is why trading is hard is because it's actually fundamentally against how our brains work. You have to train yourself to be a good trader and get out of that Neanderthal lizard brain. That makes sense? How to focus on just two to three stocks. Well, here's the best part, Monarch. So any single day that you trade, um, I'm usually looking at one to eight stocks, correct? Dude, you know what? In the beginning, man, unless you're bow, unless you have 10,000 fantasy orders out there on every single one that you can manage and you're an algo, just pick the ones that are the best odds of success for you. Every single day, I try to trade what I can handle. And sometimes it's six stocks at once. Sometimes it's just one, dude. And sometimes it's one with size. It's what I think I can make the most amount of money on, but what relates to me. So what I do every single day is I go for the weakest of the bunch first. So think about a short seller like a lion in the safari. If I am a lion, I am going after the gazelle with a hurt leg. I'm going after the zebra with a broken foot. I like the ones way under VWAP and I'm hitting harder at VWAP once they push to VWAP because that's, that's my whole strategy. Like I go for the weakest of the bunch. If I'm the king of the jungle in the safari or the king of the safari, I'm going where the blood is spilt the most. That's how you focus on two to three stocks. Once you get good at that, scale up and level up as needed, and maybe you can focus on more, but that's how I start my day every single day. I'm the king of the jungle. What is the layup? Where can I get a, where can I get a leg or a thigh? <laughs> Whatever. Um, I have a bad habit not to respect max daily loss. I just keep moving it, um, and it keeps, me, keeps giving me days of gains back and then blowing up accounts. How do I get rid of this bad habit? Day. Die. Uh, sorry, bro, if I butchered your name. Dai, this is hard, bro. This is so hard as an educator to explain this because this is something, bro, that I can't actually like really teach you. This is discipline, bro. I can teach you how to trade. I can teach you price action. I can teach you lines. Dai, this, this comes to the man in the mirror, bro. You got to go up to the mirror and say, dude, if I keep doing what I'm doing, you're going to lose. You're going to lose, man. You got to just accept one day that it doesn't work you actually have to implement what we teach or what we do, you know? That does not have to do any, yeah, boom, boom. Claudio just said the exact same thing, bro. This is so hard to answer as an educator because this is not something I can teach you. You have to teach yourself this. So Dai, I, again, man, I can teach you charts, bro, all day, but this is discipline, bro, and discipline is the hardest part about trading. And ironically, it's the most necessary. Dude, the smartest traders in the world are actually, they're not that profitable. 
the dumbest traders in the world, dude, like the, the degenerates are some of the most profitable, best traders in the world. You know why? You could be a dumb trader, dude, but if you're disciplined, I'm telling you right now, man, that's sometimes all you need. Don't bet the rent. Uh, yeah, man, I can trade well. It clicks 10 green days, but when things go wrong, a revenge trade like a mofo really needs to get... Steven, I mean, there's nothing more to say, man. You know what you do wrong. That's it. You revenge. Bro, if you can cut that revenging out, you will do just accept the loss. Okay, today I forced something, nothing popped. I forced something, I take an L, it didn't work out. Bro, just walk, walk, cut your buying power. Call your broker and say, dude, cut me off. I am not in control of my emotions right now. Chris at Cobra, Chris, lock my account, dude. I can't leave this up to myself. Go for a drive, go get breakfast. Leave your phone at home, dude. Don't download DOS on your phone. Do something, bro. But again, this is the same as what Dai was talking about, bro. At the end of the day, discipline. Discipline, 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 discipline to not revenge, to not chase, to not respect max losses, to not keep moving up that max loss, to not fight trend, to not et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. After a sec setback, best to <laughs> Joe just straight up dipped, dude. His kid was like, I need you, and he's out. <laughs> I'll just, sorry guys on YouTube, I can't see your comments while I nail these member comments. We don't have enough time to get to every single one, but I'm gonna try to do my best here. Yeah, man, I can trade well, clicks, 10 green days, but when things go wrong, a revenge trade, like, oh, sorry, I just did that one. Uh, after a setback, best to regroup, like you said, Tosh does wonders, walk away. Yeah, dude, just take a day, take a day. Hence why Bao is your mentor's man. Exactly, bro. Bao mentored all of us, man. Um, would... Would you trade the VWAP breakdown on ENG today? Ah, sorry, man. If you can post a chart, man, my, my charts went down. If you can post a chart, I can answer that. Fire. Great stuff. As always, Tosh got to run. Yeah, man. No problem, dude. For the guys that got to run. Nice to have you. So I have established a, a strategy and I'm profitable, but when a red day, how do I determine where to draw the line so I don't wipe out all my profits for the month? Um, so if Okay. Well, that, that's hard stops, Dante. I mean, that's, that's, a one, that's basically a one-word answer, two-word answer. Hard stops. Dante, dude, you got to put hard stops in your trading, man. If you, oh, dude, I'm telling you right now, I just taught, had a huge discussion with Cole about this. And the only reason I say that is because he just said it. Um, Cole is a fantastic trader, man. The only thing he had an issue with was hard stops. So I got on the phone with him. I said, Cole, dude, you're a great trader, man, but you can't let that one get out of control. And now he's helping members learn the exact same thing he learned that I learned that Bao told me fucking three years ago, dude. You gotta have hard stops in your trading, bro. The only thing, the only reason why you're green for 30 days and then on that 31st day, you're giving back a month of gains is brother. the only reason is you don't have a hard stop. That's it, that's it. Put hard stops in your trading and you never have the mother of all losses. Just automate it, dude. Automate it. Waiting is trading. Patience, pa patience pays, man. Grab my dog and kiss him and come back to trade. There you go, Gil. Whatever works for you, buddy. Uh, I'm telling you, man, go grab a coffee, go sleep with your spouse, go walk your dog, do whatever you got to do to get away from yourself when you're not in control. Yes, exactly. The struggle is real, brother. I'll get there. Dude, all of you are going to get there, but the, but you're not going to get there if you compare yourself to everybody else. If you say, wow, Alex, you know, made hundred K today and I only make $10. It doesn't matter, bro. Go at your own pace. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your play style is. You got to go at your own pace and stop comparing yourself to everybody on Twitter and, and figure out who you are and someone else's identity. People do not understand that discipline is a way of being. You either are or you're not. When friends come to me and tell me, I want to learn trading. My first question is, are you disciplined in your life? If the answer is no, go do something else. 99% uh, of you are going to lose money. Claudio just said it. He's one of our newest moderators because he is very good at discipline. He's very good at educating. Let me tell you, dude, he's figured it out, man. And he's a swing trader. So you got to have the discipline to really wait for your levels, bro. It's not as simple as just getting in where you want to. As a swing trader, you got to find these price targets that you want over days. I know Claudio will probably wait three days to take a trade on a certain position if he's waiting for a certain level to hit his match. That's what swing trading is all about. That, that's what all trading is about, bro. But you can just, you can just basically magnify the wait time that is intraday trading versus is, you know, something that is, you know, like I said, swing trading, man, two weeks, I wait for zoom to hit 320. I fucking love this dude, man. That's insane. Are you kidding me? Claudio, that is amazing, bro. I was a little early on that. I was actually down 10 grand on Zoom, which again, guys, is all relative and all very, very, very relative per trader. 10 grand is, a, is actually not down a lot for me, but I was down like 10 grand on Zoom and 
I got out with small profit today, but I was too early. Had I waited like cloud, man, I just, dude, I got in way too early. Me and Faye got in way too early. So again, guys, with trading, man, everything is about mastering one niche, having the patience, 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 patience to do so good at that niche. Then you can finally move on to the next thing or the next setup or the next niche. And $10 down might be a lot for some of you guys and $10,000 down might be a fortune for you guys or a hundred, whatever. Everybody's got their number. This is why you can't compare trader to trader. And obviously you have max stops, but on swings versus intraday, they might differ. Like my max loss on a swing is so fucking different from an intraday, dude. It is mind numbingly different. So you guys got to know this. You got to find your identity even in risk management. Had I had to pay, now while I nail a ton of other stocks, I was down on one of my swing positions kind of heavily, I guess, you know, which was Zoom. And had I had Claudio's patience, that would have been awesome, dude. I would have nailed it way more than I did, you know? But again, everything comes back to a comfort zone. And if you are within your levels and risk points, I was still within my risk tolerance and my plan. But, you know, of course, my patience was a little bit wonky on that one, to be honest. Uh, Bao says it always, if your personal life is a mess, so will your trading, no self-control in your personal life, no self-control. Ex exactly, bro. Self-control and discipline is what separates the boys from the men. I'm, I'm, I, that's it. In a nutshell, dude, it's the discipline and self-control. Um, what's this? Oh, ENG. Um, you had a question earlier, Joe. Uh, let me, let me, hold on. Let me just screenshot this so I can blow it up right next to it. One sec, buddy. All right, so this was the chart with a question uh, earlier. Give me one second. Joe, where was your question? Fuck, I think I missed it. Um, or somebody else asked it. Oh, would you, okay, would you, now let me open this up. Bingo. Ah, look at that. Solving modern day problems require modern day solutions. So would you trade the VWAP breakdown on ENG today within a reversal hour? If so, would you short the VWAP level? So I'll just, uh, let me keep it general, right? Let me keep it general. No, because there were not many plays today, I didn't come back for a reversal hour. And also I was doing this webinar. So reversal hour on a day like today, where all this, like, I only like, let me say it like this. Reversal hour in my personal process, bro, is a step two. If I kick ass in the morning, then I'm willing to risk some of that money and, and keep my discipline in check on reversal hour and then go back to the well. Now, going back to the well, as described, is also, bro, um, you know, a time that I should be trading as a short. Again, shorts only, you know, the first hour and re reversal hour are your edges. So within that reversal hour, if I'm up a good amount of money in the morning or I kill the morning, you know, and I'm, I'm doing good, I'm totally willing to come back on reversal hour and be a little bit more ballsy, but I really just like the morning for the most part. So if I have a day where I don't trade the morning, I don't come back for a reversal hour because I already feel like I missed the boat and I feel like I'm gonna do something stupid. So the only thing, and you know, obviously this dotted line is VWAP guys, and it's still over VWAP, but in reversal hour, it breaks through. It's not a convincing break enough for me. I want a death candle through. I want two things during reversal hour or I don't trade them. I want a test of tops or I want a slam candle to hit pops. I don't like this trickle down shit. This is trickle down, bro. If we got that candle, yeah, maybe I would have hit it. But again, I was you know, focused on the webinar. I didn't even know the stock was running. But again, retest of previous tops. Those are your levels mixed up with the whole and half dollar levels, the whole and half dollar marks, which was, um, well, I guess 850 would have pretty much kind of been that. Yeah, probably 850 test or a death candle through VWAP. That's what I would have looked for. <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm giving too much away again. Uh, join MIC. <laughs> uh, where are we at, guys? Hold on one sec. Um, I think we're caught up. Sorry, everyone. Apparently, they're servicing my area, internet, and TV gone. So, Joe. Joe's in here in spirit, dude. I love it. Thanks, Joe. Um, how do you manage your trade after you are stopped out? Great question, Zod. That's a great question, bro. And I don't even need a chart to tell you this. So, as you guys can see, I, you know, I posted in the, let's see, let me go back. Let me show you what my watch list was this morning as I posted it. Um, and the levels, where was it? One sec. I'm going to, I'm, I don't even, I don't even need to pull up charts to tell you this, but I'll just kind of pull up charts as a frame of reference. But basically 
And the reason why I want to show you guys this is my how I draw my lines, right? I usually draw about two really important lines. Ah, there we go. So let's full screen this. So I usually draw about two lines because this is a scale zone, guys. So of course, there might be a couple more lines, like a two line in here, but this is where I'm willing to scale, right? So if I'm willing to scale something in here, here's how if it does break my levels, I'm just out. And it, and it equates for anything, whether it breaks a pre-market high on one like this, if that is my last line for risk, or it's within the trade and it breaks this, I still cut the second line. Here's what I do. If, 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 if I really feel like a break is not that uh, permanent, I will sometimes, like basically what I'm saying, if there's a, not a lot of volume, if I don't think it's going to push heavily and it breaks, I'll stop out half. If it's a convincing ass break, I will stop out all. And then what I do is if it's only my first strike, I give myself two strikes on the day because I'm not usually wrong that much. But if I'm wrong two strikes, then I'm done for the day. I close up shop. But here's what I do. If this breaks, and this is my third, my, my first loss on the day, if this, if this breaks a pre-market high, I stop out, say I stop out full, and then we get a massive stuff from eight back to VWAP, I'm back in immediately on pops. If a something is a false break, I am back in. So to answer your question, Zah, in a nutshell, is if you, yeah, and obviously if you haven't hit max dollar loss, which I give myself a certain amount of risk, I'm not going to ever hit max dollar loss within one or two trades. I'm just not because I use outermost lines. I mitigate as much risk as I can. What I'm saying is on every single trade, if I stop out, I am now still, I'm not playing my bias that I just lost. I'm playing what the chart is telling me, bro. If it stuffs and it's saying, hey, shorts, pile back in here. You have an opportunity. I'm going to be there. But if there's no opportunity and now I'm just playing a bias or, oh my God, I lost money. I want to make it back. No, no. Then you're on the wrong track. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, and then last question, guys, because I should wrap this up. It's coming near close. Do you have a max uh, basically money loss for your morning. Oh, borrow costs. <laughs> Sometimes I get unsure if I, yes. Uh, laser. If you know, uh, if you know me and Alex or bow, dude, we will obviously pay anything. If we think we can flip it for a dollar and make money, obviously in the trade, but bro, I don't like to, I really don't like to reserve anything over four cents, man. I just don't dude. Anything over four cents. I get, I'm just like, damn, dude, I had to pay a lot for this. So that's my comfort level, but dude, I've, I've paid 70 cents per share, bro. Before. So it's like, I'm not going to say I never have. If the opportunity is unbelievable there, I mean, I'll address it during that day, but on a general speaking term, dude, I don't like paying more than four cents a share, bro. I just don't, man. I just feel like I'm getting robbed, dude. I feel like I'm getting raped. Yeah, I know, man. Seriously. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes, man, there's a lot of ETB names, which, you know, Bao just gave a whole webinar on that recently. So you guys know how to do that now. I think we covered a lot of really good stuff today, man. I think we covered, you know, don't fight trend, you know, hard stops, the importance of them, time-based trading, which is super important. You know, just if you're on a losing streak, how to deal with it. I haven't had a serious losing streak in a couple of years because now I use hard stops. But guys, back in the day, man, where you're not using hard stops, it's tough, man, because it doesn't matter if you're right. 90 days in a row, dude, which I have been, bro. My longest streak is like three months solid. But dude, if, if, that, if that 91st day that you trade, you're giving back a month or three months of gains, you're doing something wrong, man. So you guys got to understand how important risk management is. We've all been there, you know, Joe, myself, Bao, Alex, guys, when you've been trading for seven years, you've kind of, you've almost experienced almost every single emotion there is in the market. So when we say something, man, it's only because we've experienced it, dude. I know Joe has told me a couple times, dude, he's just like any other trader. He's had his head in his hands thinking, Oh my God, can I do this? You know, so many years ago and you fight through and you keep fighting the good fight, but you pay attention to what works for the, for the, for what the people are teaching you. And guys, if you're not using hard stops, which the only reason why we teach this nowadays is because anyone not using hard stops is taking extraordinary losses. You have to do hard stops. And like I said, if you're a swing trader versus an intraday trader, a max loss might be very different. It might be very different scenarios. It might be very different price targets. It might be different time zones. Um, you know, entries, the same thing, but go accordingly from niche to niche. Once you learn one, then move over to the next. I don't want, you know, you guys being like, Hey, it's my first day here. I want to trade ETFs. I want to trade options. I want to trade small caps. I want to trade big caps. I want to, you know, put some calls long and short. That's just a way to spread yourself too slim and is, you spread yourself too slim and then really fuck yourself over. So get good at one thing, 
master it, and I will end my rant there. <laughs> Guys, this was awesome. I'm winded as shit because usually Joe talks half of this and, and relieves half of the air that is not going down my lungs right now while I just expel it and talk. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up here, man, and go pass out. But love you guys, man. Thanks for coming here. I'm actually really glad charts shut down today, like for the first time in a long time, so we can really talk about the psychology side is because this is as important, man. I, I promise you, dude, this is as important. And as always, if you guys need any help on signing up, promos, just anything, man, um, 213-458-5997, guys, we will get you started in an MIC. Um, Lifetime is no longer, you know, publicly offered. Go to the site and answer that form, uh, fill out the form. And then, you know, like I said, me and Alex will review it. We'll see if you're a good fit. And then we will uh, talk about, you know, things further from there. We got the new weekend mentoring update on how that's going to go. Dude, it's going to be absolutely unbelievable. And uh, I'm telling you, man, we're kicking off 2021 with a bang, bro. So guys, you're awesome. I'll see you next week. See you, Joe.